So after going at number one in the 2001 NBA draft, Kwame Brown never lived up to the expectations of a top pick, but he stuck around in the league until 2013. Former NBA players Gilbert Arenas, Matt Barnes, Stephen Jackson were critical of Brown's career on a recent podcast, leading Kwame to release a statement of his own back at them on his YouTube channel. Take a listen. The entire life to get to a point to where most men only dream about. I think you guys need to focus and channel that energy on some more real problems. So y'all miss me with all that. Whoever, whichever one of you paying you to come at me, this here one, you better go find you something better to do. Shannon, what is your reaction to Kwame's thoughts? Skip, I'm, I'm going to keep it on the court. All that other stuff, when they got personal, that's, that's a little bit too much for me. And I, I don't want to partake into that. They said what they said. I wish it would have never got to that. You want to critique someone's play, critique someone's play. I agree with what Skip. I think Kwame has some very valid points, Skip. And I think the thing is Jordan's style worked really well with grown men, but that's not what he was getting with Kwame. Mm. He was getting a 17 year old kid straight out of high mm. school kid, Skip. And for me, I don't understand. That would be the equivalent of Fox hiring me five years ago. And my boss is telling me, man, you ain't nothing. You tell me, we ain't, we gonna be, man, we about to go off the air. With you, we, I don't even know why we signed you. I wish I could get rid of you. If you constantly beat someone's confidence down, Skip, he's 17. That's not a 25-year-old. He's 17. It was reported one of the reasons A. Polian, rest his soul, mm -hmm. fired Michael Jordan. He did not like the way he talked to the players. He did not like the way he treated the players. He felt it was unnecessary. He says, you know what? I'm the one person you can't talk to any kind of way. I control the reins. You're up out of here. Mm. I do, Skip, I'm not saying that he would, Kwame Brown maybe would not have been an all-NBA or an all-star. But I believe had Jordan not beat his confidence down so much, it doesn't matter, Skip. We've seen it. Some people, can, you can beat an a, a, a animal's confidence down, be a dog or whatever the case may be, and then someone else gets the dog and, and, and lifts him up, and it's a different animal. Well, I believe if somebody else would have gotten Kwame Brown, Kwame would have been a different animal. I'm not saying he's going to be all NBA. I'm not going to say he's going to be Shaq or anything of that nature, Skip. But he already had pressure. The first high school player ever selected number one overall. Immense pressure coming out of high school. I was in Baltimore, Skip, when they took this kid in 2001, number one overall. In every, plus, because they had Jordan also. Everybody was flocking on the team. Eric going to see him. Man, you, nah, I ain't going to see I got to rest. I'm going to, I got to play uh, football. So, Skip, I do believe Kwame would have been a better player had he not gone to Jordan first. Mm -hmm. And Jordan hadn't beat his confidence down because that's what Jordan did. Jordan beat a lot of guys' confidence down. And, and, and he was saying they wanted, they wanted Elton Brand. They really drafted me to trade to the Bulls for Elton Brand. A. Polian vetoed the trade. I believe there's some validity to that, Skip. It's hard for me to get I, – I don't know my, why Mike would do this. Why would you select the guy and then beat him down in the process when you're going to need the guy to help you win? But that's – the thing about leadership, Skip, is that the thing that you got to understand, what can I say to get the best out of him? Mm. Do I need to kick him in the butt? Do I need to praise him? Do I need to put my arm around him? Do I need to tell him a joke? Do I, what is it? And the really good leaders, be it coaches or whatever, military, whatever it is, Skip, yeah. you find that. It, because you can't coach everybody. You can't lead everybody the same yep. because everybody isn't the same. Mm -hmm. But I think Kwame Brown has a lot of valid points in what he's saying. He's right, Skip, in the, uh, in, as terms of life being where we, he came from Glen Academy. Brother Georgia, which is about 90 minutes from where I, south of where I grew up, mm -hmm. down he, 95. He's Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah, he yeah. went to school. He, he, went, to, he, went, he went to high school, school in Glen, Glen I Academy. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where it is. Yep. I believe he would have been better. Maybe he's 10 and 5. Maybe he's 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe, I believe he'd have had a much better career if his career didn't start with Michael Jordan. That's mm -hmm. just me personally. I co-sign what you just said. Now back to your original statement, you didn't love the personal shots. Right. Obviously, Kwame chose to take the lowest road, not, yeah. not even a middle ground road. Yeah. And he got deeply, seriously personal with his shots. Yeah. And I'm going to give him a pass for that because this man suffered the way very few players have suffered. Mm -hmm. He became 
everybody's favorite line. target he did. He was for years line. and years. He was a punchline in this league. Do you know how hard it is to live with that? I don't know that I've ever seen Kwame Brown speak in public I until this. I have not. I've never heard him talk either, Skip. And I liked him. <laughs> I liked him a lot. Yeah. I, I thought he was sometimes unintentionally funny, mm -hmm. but, but he was insightful. Right. He knew what he was talking about. Right. I started thinking maybe you should do a podcast because I would watch. <laughs> yeah. I would listen. Yeah. I would. He he's interesting to me. He and is. he really knows what of he spoke. Right. So look, we know Steven Jackson yeah. him on the show occasionally. We know Matt, Matt Barnes Barr, had yeah. him on the show occasionally. We yep. like him. Yes. But but obviously there's if, if I can paraphrase the old biblical expression about be careful about throwing stones if you live in a glass house. Right. Well, obviously, those two plus Gilbert, they've, they've occasionally lived in a glass house. We get that. Right. So you, you can throw those stones back, mm -hmm. and he threw them back as hard as he right. could and maybe broke a little right. glass. Right. Okay, now back to his point. He was not what you would classify as a bust. He played 12 years in the National Basketball Association. Mm -hmm. That's pretty great. Yeah. As he said, I was able to buy my mom a house on a golf course. Mm -hmm. He did. Yeah. Right out of high school at, yeah. at what was 17. 17. <laughs> he bought his mother a home mm -hmm. on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Yes. And he didn't score a lot of points or average a lot of rebounds. Right. But he six did, and five. But he did play in 18 playoff games. And in those playoff games, he averaged nine and six, which is respectable right. to me. Right. He played alongside some pretty good players, one the late, great Kobe Bryant. Right. And it wasn't like and, Skip Day was running the offense through him. No. It was so basically no. you, we throw you a lob and you get it and put it back and dunk it. Okay. So what do I always tell you about my guy, Michael Jeffrey Jordan? Mm -hmm. To me, he is unquestionably the greatest player ever. You disagree, but I stand by what I say. Mm -hmm. And yet, he has also proven to be the worst picker of talent mm -hmm. in the history of this league as the owner and operator of the Charlotte franchise. Mm -hmm. He's just been pathetic because I, I can't even begin to defend it. In 14 years uh, b going into this, b before this playoffs, right. in the 14 previous years he's owned and operated, he's made three playoff appearances. Twice they got swept. Once they took the heat to seven games in 2016, but they lost that. So he's 0 for 3 in his three playoff series, and he's 3 and 12 overall in the playoffs as the owner and operator. Right. And then, yes, he chose Kwame number one overall. But it wasn't a great draft to start with. Right. Tyson Chandler went second. Powell went third. And that, that, was, right. that would have been the pick, right? right. Mm -hmm. Took him a little while to get going in Memphis. But once Jerry West got a hold of right. him. And paired, and paired it with Kobe. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I don't know, had he because Kobe was so much like Michael, I don't think it going to Kobe first would have been better. He did probably the, the ideal situation, if you want to go to a superstar, probably LeBron. Because LeBron, if you listen to everybody say yep. the way LeBron and Kobe's style mm -hmm. of leadership is very different. Yep. One guy is praising you, say, hey, okay, okay. hey, we're going to be positive. And the other guy's like, hey, get the effing job done mm -hmm. or else. That is correct. And that's how Jordan was, Skip. He beat him down so much. He's like, am I doing anything right? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what his practice habits was, Skip. I don't know what he did off the court. I, don't, I, I can't speak to that because I wasn't there. But all I can say is this. At some point in time, a, a, a child can only take so no, much. I, I got it. But when we're talking bus, let's talk about the 06 draft. Michael Jordan took third overall, Adam Morrison. Yeah. You can look it up. I said before the draft, can't play. Michael Kidd Grilchrist. Okay, that's, that's, that's another two. one. But he He's took, second overall. He took him over Dame and Bradley Beal. Oh. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to Kimba. He took Kimba over Clay and Kawhi. Uh, I don't know about that. He took Cody Zeller over Giannis. Hmm, no. Noah Vonley over Zach Levine. Probably not. And then Frank Kamix, excuse me, Kaminsky over Devin Bush. Uh, I'm sorry. Booker. De Devin Booker. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. i got the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> on my mind. But over Devin Booker is right. no good. Right. It, it's like swing and miss, swing and miss, big swing and miss. Right. But, but again, Kwame in that draft, Joe Johnson went 10th, Zach Randolph went 19th, and my guy Tony Parker went bottom of the first right. round. Back then, you, Skip, you could, people were still taking big. They were just taking big. Every once in a while, you got an Allen Iverson, Skip, that you took number one overall as a guard. Yep. But more times than not, then, Skip, you were still – the guy was 6'11", yep. 250, was agile, could run up and down the court. I, I got him at 270. Yeah, I, yeah, I think but, that's what he weighed coming out of high school. Yeah, so, Skip, I mean – 
it, it wasn't like you, they were loaded like you had a choice between you chose him over Shaq yep. or you chose him over Anthony Davis, Skip, or you chose him over some other big. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case. Now, it's, it's like uh, uh, when people criticize the, uh, the Trailblazers for taking Sam Bowie over Jordan. But, Skip, at the time, they already had a small. They need, And you're like, well, <laughs> the, the Bobby Knight said, well, hey, take him and play him. So we need a center, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Bobby Knight told him, say, well, take Jordan and play him at center. Yeah. We knew Elijah Wall was going first. Elijah Wall, and you came to bed. You said, well, you see what Jordan turned out, but Elijah Wall was, was legit. So you can make the case, okay, Portland probably should have gone. But, Skip, there was no other Michael Jordan in his draft. No. Nope. So it was like, oh, man, y'all passed on him. And even though Powell, I think Powell was rookie of the year, Skip, Powell didn't come Powell until they paired it with Kobe, mm -mm. and they started winning championships. Yep. I happened to talk to Michael Jordan the night before this draft, and he told me he was leaning toward the kid. Well, I didn't know anything about I, I hadn't even right. seen the kid play because right. at, at that point, and what was that, 2001, right. you couldn't even find any YouTube. No. There was no YouTube. No, it wasn't, it wasn't okay. like it. The high school scene burst on the scene with, Le jo with LeBron. Now, all of a sudden, these high school games getting televised, yep. Skip. Mm -hmm. LeBron's on every week. He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So I knew about the kid because I'm from Georgia. That's the only, yep. re the only reason I knew about him. So Michael attached his pride to this kid at 17. Well, you know what's going to happen to the kid once he steps on the practice floor right. with Michael Jordan. you got to live up to, to me picking you first overall. And he, it was terrifying skip. for this kid. That, but Skip, that's like me. Mm -hmm. I'm playing, here I am 20, I'm 30 years of age. I'm playing my son and I'm dominating in the backyard. You ain't gonna ever be nothing. You can't beat me. Do you know what? I, I don't even know what I've been thinking about playing you. Skip, how that's gonna, come on. Jordan, you Jordan. Yep. You need to, you need to 